Hey, um. To whoever may need this nugget of encouragement, things will join us on this week's episode of Rolling to Win True Athletes and meet Charlotte Peterson, who, after only eight months of recovery from a spinal cord injury, wins the title of the Arnold Amateur Women's Wheelchair Bodybuilding Champion. We discuss life post injury, daily victories, and what's ahead. How's things this morning out there in uh, sunny Phoenix, right? Yeah, yeah, sunny Phoenix. <laughs> it's going good. Nice. Finished, so what's the temperature out there in Phoenix? Um, I think it's um, I think we're about sixty-five right now. It'll probably hit seventies today. So, right, how about cool. you? Where Where are you at? I'm in Virginia, so it's a little chilly this morning. I, I mean, yeah. you know, for for springtime, I'm thinking it's like fifties and raining right now. So, it looks like you have right. a lot better weather there. <laughs> yeah, today we did get some rain yesterday. Some pretty dark clouds, but. Kind of nice. comes and goes nice. right now for spring. Okay, I didn't think it ever rained out there in Phoenix. I thought it was like the sun sun spot <laughs> out there. Always, no, no, we get some rain. <laughs> right on. So right on. All right. So, you know, what have you been up to since uh, since your win there at the Arnold Amateur? Um. Well, I've been back at the gym and working out. I kind of put my posing on hold a little bit and just really focusing on um, building as much muscle as I can. I know you don't have much time between shows, but it, you know we're going to give it what we can and um, try to maximize uh, the the refeeds or not the refeed, but the um, uh, the reverse diet. Trying to maximize with the right. the reverse diet, all the food coming in and being able to lift a little bit heavier for about a month, and then we'll kind of go backwards and start getting ready for show. So, um, so yeah, keeping, keeping my nose down to the grind and, right, and right. I think, what is it now? Like nine weeks, I think nine weeks, eight weeks, yeah. not long, not yeah, long. Nine weeks. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting close. So you're not going, huh? Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, you know, not only has, uh, my coach kind of talked me into just kind of, uh, actually taking a real off season, uh, to, to grow and whatnot. Um, but Shannon's yeah. having a, she's having like a, a, some kind of craniotomy surgery. So she has some funky nerve pain going on that they're going to try to fix. Mm -hmm. It's like in her head. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. We're gonna, that's going to happen that's, right uh, around the same time then, huh? Well, uh, she's having the surgery tomorrow. So then it's like an eight week recovery. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Like okay. Cool. So, All right. yeah. So uh, we're, you know, I'm going to stick around and take care of her and, and also, you know, I'm training and enjoying the food and the eating and stuff. So maybe, maybe, you know, it's not yeah. so bad jumping right back <laughs> into prep after all. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, prep is pretty hard. And I don't think that, you know, with the difficulty of prep and then um, a surgery recovery and trying to take care of somebody at the same time, I just don't think that that'd be a good, good mix, you know. Yeah. You're always, Cause you know, during prep, you're a little ill and angry and hungry and, little snappy and yeah. stuff so you know it is it is minimal but still at the same time you, you know the the little snappiness she doesn't need any of that when she's trying to get that's better, right so. yeah she gets the, all the help from you that she can get so does that mean that maybe Arnold next year I, if they have another amateur next year we don't know for sure but would that I don't know if they would offer pro cards at that point it but depends on how many mean? people would show up, I think. But yeah, I, li I like that Arnold stage. And then if I had to wait it out until the till the national, so be Excellent. it. I could wait yeah. it out till then. Yeah, yeah give it a full and, year. Okay. And give it a shot again, for sure. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we know a couple of people going to the nationals. I think I just know one male athlete oh, yeah? that's going. But and yeah. Who's that? Uh, is it Rory? Oh yeah, um, Rory, Rory Coons. That's right. The yeah, Mr. Stone yeah. Powerhouse himself. Right? Yes, yes, that's the one. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. he, I know he's going. We have our our wheelchair national wristbands on and <laughs> Right. Right. I, I, I think that uh, there's another competitor. Um I think he's in Huntington, West Virginia. 
I, I can't think of his name right off, but he said he's going to go. I saw a Facebook post there, you know, because okay. you, you're friends with all these, you know, people on Facebook or what have you. So I keep up with yeah. a lot of people. I, I see that a lot of the wheelchair athletes, we all have 60 or 70 friends in common. Like yeah, if, if you <laughs> go <true>. through and <laughs> so I guess that it, in our own little crowd, we're pretty, you know, kind of kind of get around if you're going to post then people can see it for sure. And yeah. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, I think that when uh, Galen and I had a picture with each other and mm -hmm. we posted it, I got lots of <laughs> lots of new people wanting to follow me. So I was like, OK, cool. I'm making a oh, lot yeah, of new friends right. in the wheelchair community, the wheelchair workout, which is awesome because that's what you want. That's that's the community you you want to rally and you want them to rally you. So it's fun. No doubt. Exactly. Exactly. And and you know, I can think about the times when when really I wasn't feeling so hot and, and I could look at the the wheelchair athletes and stuff and I'd be like, man, like they're really getting it done. So then as yeah. you watch that, you, you find where your where your niche is and and sort of get after it or or you don't a lot of people don't a lot of people just kind of sit around and and don't that's kind of sad to me because there's so much that can be done but that's that's yeah. the whole purpose of this this little podcast that i'm trying to put together is so that you can see it and go hey look maybe i can do that right yeah so, yeah um i, I was talking sure. with uh with a gentleman who just got married and uh he is into the adaptive surfing so that's going to be something oh. coming up here in the future that'll be fun to talk Great. about uh, yeah and, and i i kind of grew up in in eastern north carolina so like within an hour from the beach or something like that so i mean just between you and me i might have skipped school went to the beach a time or two but don't tell my parents <laughs> um and uh uh it's very interesting to see that, that that is actually a thing like they're on tour right now so he's in australia now and then i think heading to hawaii next so mm -hmm. you know that, that that looks like something that if somebody was was really all about it'd be a whole lot of fun you know oh yeah um, that sounds great right I so you, you haven't been injured very long right like eight months yeah. now, nine months yeah about eight and a half Okay, and and here you are already out here and and you know kind of kind of making a name for yourself as a wheelchair athlete or just an <laughs> athlete that has to use a wheelchair for mobility. Um, so how did you end up in this situation? What happened to you? Um, so I was in prep prep for um a bikini competition. I had done five shows in 2022, and. I took some time off to get some hernias repaired. I had five hernias, probably from five oh, children. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I had done Masters USA and I knew that I was going to take some time off. So I had my hernia surgery and um, it, I was slowly coming back after about three months. I was starting to come back to the gym a little bit. And by six months, I was pretty full working out again. And this was my first time back on the Smith machine and um, I hadn't used it for the six, you know, past six months and I was feeling good. My core was feeling good and I'd been working my glutes quite a bit. Like I was doing all kinds of glute exercises. I just hadn't done these squats yet. And uh, so I was visiting oh my, I took my daughter to um, a volleyball camp in Provo, Utah at BYU. And so we had dropped her off and my, my older daughter lives there and she's a hair salon or a hair stylist. And so she, she and I went to the gym and so we're working out and we get on the Smith machine and I was on my fourth set and about halfway through my fourth set, all of a sudden I get this burst in my back and I knew immediately my, I knew immediately my back broke. I just, you know, you just knew that feeling. I just had this rush of warm sensation all wow. the way down my body it didn't wasn't painful it was just this burst and like I what am I going to do with this weight that's on my back how am I going to get off off wow. this rack and I was looking around like nobody knew that I was what had just happened and I'm going down you know and my my head's going down and the bar's like really on my head and I I don't know how I got off but um I jumped off the bar and landed on the ground and I felt nothing from my hips down. I couldn't feel anything. Mm. And I, well, it, it felt like, you know, when you go to the dentist and your cheek is totally numb and it's kind of like, 
puffy feeling. That's right. how my that's how my my glutes felt. They were just like a bag of water, and I couldn't move. I couldn't feel anything. And, um, and my daughter was with me, and you know, I I said, "Help! Call nine one one. My back broke." And the um, the lady that had checked us into the gym was standing right by me. I don't know what she was doing. I don't know if she was working out or if she was putting weights away, but she was right there and she had a phone right there. She called 911 and I just lay there and uh, we just was like panting, just like, oh, what happened? I don't, right. this is so weird. We you know how could this happen? And, and it wasn't like I was lifting that much. I had about 95 pounds, which I've, you know, definitely done this before. I had mm-hmm. was on way heavier. Um, and so as I sat there, I thought, okay, hurry up paramedics, because I got to get back here and start working out again. I'm like, hurry up, let's get this, <laughs> let's get this fixed, you know? So, um, so they come and they, uh, give me all kinds of medications and get me on the stretcher. And once I get in the ambulance, that's when the pain hit. I don't okay, know about you right. and you're in your situation, if you felt the pain right away, or if it just came on later, but some stories yeah, it, that I've heard pretty bad people, initially. You, you don't feel it right <laughs> away, but eventually does yeah. but yeah it came on pretty bad and uh anyway so that's what happened is um and I just got right into the surgery about 45 minutes after I got to the hospital and wow. the 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 surgeon on call uh, was calling my husband and he says you know usually we go through the stomach to remove the intestines and everything and do the repair from the stomach but we're not going to do that we're just going to we're just going to go straight to the back and we're going to pull that right off of her spine as she be, should be able to have some leg movement once we've done that. And so that's what they did, which I'm really glad because I just had this abdominal surgery with my hernia repairs and, and everything sure, that I right. thought, oh, what a wise decision. I'm so glad. Um, and so right after surgery, I was able to move my my quads. So I had quad movement. I was able to, my okay. knees move, but I didn't have any ankle movement, no toe movement. I had some sensation. Um I mean, I have sensation. It's just very numb. Like I have sensation right. all the way down to my toes, but um, mm-hmm. like I could feel something like somebody's touching my toe, but I wouldn't know which toe or I didn't know like what they're touching me with or I something. Had kind you know? of like, so see if this is, this sounds at all familiar. Like I had sort of like uh, put the, the, the feeling of wearing ski boots. Have you ever worn ski boots, you know, where yeah. you can't move anything. So it kind of feels like ski boots to me. Like, ever since the very beginning it's been been that way you know it's been below the knee sensation that is yeah 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 interesting okay so you do have a little sensation below the knee right right yeah my yeah. my injury was like uh it's a, a t12 l1 burst fracture and then okay. the repair and everything they they called it t10 complete because after t10 the sensations were pretty like at the time um I didn't really have anything so it's been six years now and steadily steadily over six years little by little you know it sensation does come back like I don't take any medications anymore nothing like that so I I do have some neuropathy and whatnot in in my legs especially in my feet but uh it's not as bad as it used to be it sort of subsided after about six months of injury you know six months of, of recovery from the injury so um now okay. what, well, so we're uh, about the, we're, say we're about the same level so mine was l1 right. that was, that's what i was about to yeah. ask is is what you had broken you know mm-hmm. yeah yep it was l1 incomplete and uh we have a really good picture of my spine or this the mm-hmm. uh it broke in two ba- basically my l1 broke in two and one piece went right into the spine and it i mean oh, it looks really okay. it looks really deep and <laughs> yeah. yeah looking at the the x-ray was kind of scary but they were able to pull it off. Now I have the the, the rods, and um, right. yeah, like the the everybody else. Now we can't go through a metal detector or undetected. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yours was broken in near half. I had what's called a burst fracture. It's like a lot of little. I guess it just kind of breaks into pieces. So the the two vertebrae that broke from me were just broken into pieces. And, okay. Um, one of them had pieces enough to where they could get like a screw on one side. And then I think the other one, there was no, no chance of getting any screws or anything. So they just kind of pulled the bone off the, the uh, spinal cord so that it would decompress that little section. Yeah. 
I, I can't remember what the little bundle of nerves is that's there from you know T12 to L1, but basically it's where the spinal cord ends and then becomes more innervation uh, going down into the lower extremities. And uh, well, I, I guess I had mashed that ball pretty good on, uh, I fell off a roof, that's what happened to me in case, you know, I had never told you, but. Yeah, so yeah. so you were working on uh, air conditioning or you were on a roof or? I, I was up there, like my grandfather was replacing a roof over here in Aspen and he oh, asked okay. me if I wanted to come. I wasn't, I'm not a roofer, right? But I, yeah. I know how to, I know how to swing a hammer and I've done some roofing work um and and really like if you were to let me loose on a roof i know what to do but i'm not it's going to take me a while and i'm not great at it so um i was just helping him out and then ended up like tarping the roof because some rain was coming through and stepped on the tarp where there wasn't any roof and went on down I, oh. it wasn't a very long fall 12 to 16 yeah. feet and yeah, you know, I'm just not really certain but i fell on a, a four by four post right in here on my side and okay. uh kind of kind of kinked me up i guess so whatever that wow. impact did yeah yeah I, I i knew right away that my back was broken because when i opened my eyes and my, still felt like my legs were straight up in the air but they were just crumpled in the ground i was like yeah we have a problem here <laughs> <laughs> oh so, wow uh, yeah and, and they you know like it was you couldn't get to me so they had to get the stretcher to me and then that was a bumpy ride everything was bumpy like everything oh. hurt you know for the first oh. six months I'm pretty sure that that's the best explanation yeah and it, I'm sure it you made were it screaming. really hard <laughs> oh sure sure but oh yeah I, you know eventually eventually I found a way and um you know life's pretty good now can't can't complain yeah you know no, so no were you married complaint. at the time Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. Okay. I was married at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I guess that you could say that through like through all of it, which it happens to a lot of people, um, you know, we kind of decided we didn't want to be married to one another, I guess, at the time, you know, would be okay. the best way to put it. You know, that that's the yeah. most amiable way to say things, I suppose. So okay, um, I think that's and, gotta be you hard. Know, I Right, right. It was pretty difficult. But one thing for sure is um, I I ended up growing just in, independent uh, instead of reliance on someone. So that, that was good, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, I really needed that. Um, I think a lot of people, um, when they have an injury like this, you, you really need to work out your independence, you know, and, and if not, then there's a real yeah. mental problem there, mental block of some kind, you know, that's where depression will come in and stuff. It's like, I'm a burden on everybody or, or what have yeah. you, because you're not able to do for yourself or you think you're not able to do for yourself, which is probably really the mindset that needs to change is you think that you can't do for yourself and some people they right. really need a caregiver and, and others could probably do a lot more if they had like a little less caregiving um you know like let's say they have a caregiver full-time and you know so they rely on them for everything whereas if they were to have them you know just to help with uh me menial tasks around the house or something like that then they would have to do more and feel more of a sense of independence as well so i don't know i've looked at a whole lot of stuff with this and 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 i i know that um there's a lot of people who don't take it as well as you have for instance like you're in there you're, you're already like pretty much a bodybuilder right you're you're a bikini athlete right in the bikini shows yeah and uh you break your back on the equipment and then get back in there and now you're still competing <laughs> as a wheelchair competitor if that doesn't say yeah. at all then that's a hell of a mindset to have there um <laughs> that's the mindset that, that everybody needs that gets injured in any way that is life-changing like this so yeah and yeah i know everybody tries and it, you know really like if you had told me this say like which i'm pretty sure i was told this in the first 30 days post accident uh you know it's pretty much yeah right things are going to be okay you, you know but things things are okay it's whatever you make it you know yeah it's true like on the independence it takes a while especially when you're so helpless right after surgery you have to come you have to overcome so much you know just like sitting up in bed or right. just you know your just basics 
you know, trying to get around. Um, and then when you come home from the hospital, you got to figure out how do I open the microwave and how do I get in the refrigerator and how do I get, right. you know, things? It's, it's like a big learning curve. And then, you know, in your mind, you think I can't do that. I can't do that. And then you realize, wait, I haven't tried it. And then you start trying things and you realize how much you can do. And so right. it comes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen you on a treadmill. So like, how is, are you still doing physical therapy stuff trying to, yeah. you know, all right. So yeah, how's I that still, going? I'm still going to therapy every day. Um, yeah, there's two different treadmills. I go to two different therapy places. There's one that's closer and one that's a little bit farther, but I, I get something different out of both places. So I continue to do both. Um, and there's one that has, it's a wheel, it's a treadmill with a uh, harness. And so the harness kind of takes the body weight off of you so you can use your legs and walk. Um, okay. And so sometimes they lower the harness a little bit so it makes me work harder. And sometimes they lift it because they want me to go faster. You know, just uh, some variables there. And um, sometimes they have me go sideways. So I'm like sidestepping or sometimes they go backwards. And then they'll have that, try to translate that into on the ground without the harness and doing it with the bars or doing it with something, you know, to help me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other location has a, it's called a anti-gravity treadmill and you step wow, into okay. this bubble and they zip it up around your waist and then it, it blows air. So this air blows up and it pushes you up so that it holds your body weight. And that one has mm-hmm. a camera, which is really cool because you can watch your feet and correct it while you're walking because my, you know, my feet are in or out or whatever and so um when you're on that treadmill i like the feedback that i get by watching and i can i can change my leg position and so it's really i mean i can tolerate about 10 minutes just because i have to use my arms so much i mean my legs don't take all my weight yet and so i have to use my arms to hold on (laughs) <laughs> to the treadmill just to get you know to get some weight into my legs and so you know after about 10 minutes my hands are killing me you know <laughs> just like right. and they don't do it every day um but you know that's you know that's the thing it's like it's as a bodybuilder we're using our arms not just for daily mm-hmm. function but you know to lift the weight and you know all the stress we put on our wrists and and arms and everything so um you know you just you try not to overdo right on that right Right. There is such a thing as overdoing, overtraining, overstimulation, all that. Have to give the body time to heal up, you know, yeah. rest and, and the proper nutrition, proper rest and all that gets you going in the right direction on that for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Nice. So, so did, yeah, did five you, kids. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Five kids. That's crazy. <laughs> I did. I, you know, like I, I thought it honestly, I thought it was just you and your husband just enjoying life. But I didn't know. <laughs> But five kids. I mean, how did your kids take this to begin with here? Um, I think it was hard for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. they didn't know what to expect. You know, my husband was always very positive and saying that, you know, she's gonna get better, she's gonna walk again, you know, all these things. And so they kind of had that in their minds. And um, you know, and after a while, you know, time goes by and my 15-year-old son's like, Mom when are you going to ever walk? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I, if I will, if I, I it's going to take time. If I do, I'm just not really sure. And then as they see me train and go to another competition, I think it put everybody at ease. Like, okay, mom's still strong. Mom is still, you know, doing it, even though she's in a chair, she can still right. accomplish things. And so um, they, I, admire that I've done you know this next step you know being able to get back into what I enjoy doing and being able to um do competitions again so well that's great it's been good yeah that's great yeah I I, uh my 22 year old son which I have three sons that's one's 26 one and he's not 22 he's 23 and 12 that's my three sons I have one daughter she's 21 now um but my 23 year old he's in the gym with me all the time and uh it's funny because I people are in the habit of complaining it's just sort of the natural state of things like we complain about things so uh maybe he's complaining about something I just kind of look at him like really really dude 
we're, we're going to start complaining today. And he's like, oh, fine, you have it rougher, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I, I think that's, that's, that's great, right. you know, because, um, you know, because I guess at the end of the day, when you're when you're in something, it seems like it's the worst thing ever, you know, so hence, you know, yeah. you complain and really that may make it worse or whatever. So the one thing that, or the one thing, one of the many things that I've learned is to, to really try to look on the bright side of things instead. Um, yeah. And, you know, cause we are in the habit of like, well, how about this horrible thing and this horrible thing and that horrible thing instead of going, well, you know, this thing happened and I get to learn something about it because of this. And, you know, so that's where I'm at now. And that took, that took probably, I don't know, three years for me. I'm hard headed. But uh, it seems like you're doing pretty good with something like that, you know, with looking at the uh -huh. bright side of things and stuff, which I, I never, uh, you know, the doctor straight was like, you're not going to walk ever again. So, mm -hmm. but, and I, and, you know, really at the time, I was just in so much pain that I really didn't care. I was just like, well, whatever, yeah. like slay me now, you know, put me out of my misery. <laughs> we don't have to do this, yeah. you know, <laughs> so, um, because again, you know, when you're in that kind of pain, that's, that's it. And then if you think about say where you'd be 150 years ago, or even a hundred years ago, depending on where you were in the country, maybe even as close, close to 50 years, if you had broken your spine, then the chances are you would have lived a few weeks and that would have been it, you know, just because yeah. the technology wouldn't have been there for even to get rid of your bodily waste or any of that stuff so that people would have just been like well we don't know what to do he's just going to be miserable for the next three weeks and then he's going to go um so we live in a time and I, I think about this all the time where we're interconnected and and we have all these things with technology and all these advances and uh just what a time to live in but you know just what a time like here i am living in this time that if this had happened that i wouldn't even be here so it, this is all the second chance really and i think that that's that's where i've been with it for quite a bit is like this is a second chance yeah you know, yeah like, uh, maybe maybe i didn't get things right when i was walking around but now is a chance to, <laughs> to sort of redeem myself for that and and make up for it in one way or other and um, I, I really do in, enjoy um, life now much more than I enjoyed life before. Mm -hmm. Before I was yeah. too busy in the rat race, whereas mm -hmm. now um, now I, I stop and smell the smell the roses, right? So that, yeah, that's kind of yeah. So yeah, I I definitely it has definitely woken me up to. Uh, what other people go through who are, who are in wheelchairs and, and just have had accidents and things happen that life has changed. And um, you just, now I, I, I just see differently. I see people differently and um, it just helped me have more compassion um, and just understanding of like what other people go through. And also just like how many good people there are in the world that want to help me out and, right. um you know, so it's just, it's very, it's been very eye-opening. And just when you're able to accomplish something, you just have that sense of, look what I've done, look what I'm doing, you know, look what right. I can do, even though, even though I can't be what I used to be. So. Right. Yeah. I was having a talk with a friend of mine, Casey, he's in Kentucky and uh, same deal, same deal there, you know, like you, you never really think about being in this shape until you're in this shape. So, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, now is a chance to, again, with, we live in such an amazing day and age, there's a chance that we can tell people, uh, you know, that it is, it is different living like this. It's not that we're saying, you know, like, I, I don't know if I like the word dis disability even, but I mean, it is sort of the, the common term. There's this guy, uh, uh, what's his name? something Hamilton and he has a channel it's disabled but not really right and and then mm -hmm. I think about it you know they're like you're differently able I'm like no it's not differently able either <laughs> it just it just takes me longer to do things now than it used to right I have yeah. to figure out I, I have to be a little more uh ingenious when I think of a way to get to the top shelf you know that, that, that <laughs> it just yeah. takes a little longer but I'm still quite capable of doing everything that I was before um 
mostly. I don't think I want to try to climb ladders or anything like that, but <laughs> if I could, I probably would. Uh, yeah. and, and I've seen, yeah, there's this other cat. I guess he was a carpenter. I hadn't talked to him and uh, like before he got injured and he still like is a carpenter and it's pretty wild to see how he works and builds things, but he's still building stuff. And, and to yeah. me, it's amazing to see just the perseverance in this particular community. Um, I agree. Because man, like, it's it's literally where there's a will there's a way and if there is no yeah. will then you're right there will be no way but where there's a will yeah. there is a way every time and and I love that you know and you know I really wouldn't have had the chance to even think about that living in a different life you know I mean hell I never even started lifting weights until I was like 40 mm -hmm. you know that it was always like I work. I don't have time for this. I mean, I was a drinker. I was a smoker. I was all these things. And and then, you know, fall off the roof and, and now life has to change. And yeah. it, it, it was either adapt or, or, or don't. And I chose to adapt. And here, here we are today having this conversation. So yeah, yeah that's right. That. Yeah. I've noticed that so. um, people will say to me, you know, how are, how are you doing this? Or like they see me and they they think, oh my gosh, if that happened to me, I would just be devastated. And they say, right. oh, look what you're doing. So many other people do nothing. And I think, you know what? You would do the same thing as, as I am. You just right. don't realize it until you're in that situation yeah, that you really would do the same thing. You would you would overcome. You would find things that that fulfill you and, and do great things. And because um, I think if it was me looking at someone else and I'd be like, Oh my gosh, I never want to be in that situation. But then once you are, it's like, it's not that bad. You know, you find, right. you find a way to make happiness in life. And, and it's all, it's, it's, it's almost the same, you know, you just live life a little differently. Yeah. Just, a little, you just like, live and adapt it. Just, just adapt it. Right. 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 So. Stair, stairs become your mortal enemy, but escalators aren't so bad <laughs> as long as they're wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what would you have to say to anybody that say, you know, newly injured? I mean, to, to me, you know, like you are newly injured, but, uh, you know, somebody who's who's right in it, right in the mix of it, say even in in-house uh, rehab right now, like what would you tell them uh, as far as uh, to, to get them up and going? Uh, I would say take it day by day and do the best you can that day. It's going to get better. Um, do something hard every day. And as you do it, you'll see that you can do something hard and then it gets easier every time you do something hard the next time. I, I think there's so much out there to be grateful for and so much out there to look forward to. Um, you just have to find it and you just have to keep looking. And there's, there's great things in, in the little things. Um, so I just, you know, there might be moments of despair and that's totally fine. It's, <clears throat> it's something expected because something like this life changing, there is despair and there's, there's a loss, there's, a, there's grief, you know, you lose, you've lost a life that you used to live, but there's also um, so much to be learn from it and there's so many great opportunities that will come that never came to you before that can bring a lot of happiness and joy all right love it love it and if you're having a hard time finding any of that stuff i actually wrote a book on how to find purpose i did oh, i, I wrote awesome. it and 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 you know i, I self-published it and then uh, right now I'm deciding, I think I'm just going to give it away, you know, because I didn't write it to make any money off of it or anything like that. It's just, you know, some stuff that could probably help somebody get through that hump and figure out what they want to do with life. I, love so. that. I just signed up for a bunch of outdoor activities uh, mm -hmm. through the Ability360. So I'm going to do um, kayaking, some rowing, uh, some biking. I think it's called a a lasher i'm not sure i haven't done it yet but um okay it's a it's a mountain bike that you can get on i don't know but um oh, wow. and then we're going to do some hiking up in sedona in, in the wheelchair um i think they've got white white raft 
white river rafting coming up in July. Right. Just a whole <laughs> bunch of things. So I'm like, I want to try it all. I'm just, I really right. want to like a full find, schedule then. Yeah, yeah. I want to find my find my groove. You know, I mean, I enjoy bodybuilding and all that, but I also want to do something something right. more. I don't know. I feel like right. there's so much out there. Yeah, yeah. So but bodybuilding people. kind of keeps you in a little box a little bit because you have to stay close to food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Right on. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll have to keep up with you and see what's happening as far as uh, right. your white water rafting and all your outdoor activities. So right. go, go ahead and plug your Insta so anybody that's watching can follow along. Um. Yeah. It's Charla underscore Peterson is my okay. Instagram. So. All right. That's it. Nice and simple. So, yeah, heck yeah. Nice well, simple. again, thank you for talking with me. And, uh, all righty. You're welcome. It's yeah. good to, good to yeah, catch ho- up with you. Hopefully, and- I'll see you at, at one of the contests. But if not, you know, we'll you know, talk again in the future, I'm sure. All right. We'll take care. All right. Yep. You too. Bye.